Thanks for the invitation. Yeah, so the presentation will be like two parts. The first one is like uh, the technical slides, like how we uh, achieve this performance. And second one is like by Bowen, who is going to do a live demo on, on, on the multi scanner multiplication part. Yeah. Okay, so let's start with some um, um, motivation. So, like, uh, the knowledge right now is trendy, it's one of the hottest uh, topic in the blockchain community. And we have various like projects working on different part of blockchain, such as uh, near one uh, privacy oriented uh, blockchain, such as Aztec, it's, maybe it's a private roll up, uh, ADO, Espresso, Manta, Mina. And for near tooth, we have a bunch of like uh, project trying to scale up the TPS for Ethereum. And besides that, we also have a bunch of like uh, other uh, ZK applications such as ZK Indexer, uh, ZK Bridge, and also the uh, ZK Proof Market. So like, yeah, it's uh, one of the hottest uh, topic in, in the blockchain community right now. And why we need to, uh, why we need like hardware acceleration ZKP is like, since like by just running CPU or like GPU on to, uh, mm -hmm. to generate the ZKP proof is just too slow. Like uh, here is a screenshot of like what happens on ZK Sync. As you can see here, there is a 20 hours delay for all these like transactions, so that's not acceptable. And second, then like um, DYDX is a um, uh, DeFi platform previously on uh, StarkNet, but due to the snow uh, performance of like StarNet, like it's about uh, every 10 hours, so like uh, so like they somehow migrate to Cosmos. So that's why like we need hardware acceleration to make the KP like way much faster than they uh, than they are right now today. Uh, yeah, but to design the hardware acceleration like to like be more specific like, to to design this ASIC, um, yeah. So like one big headache for us to say is like all the ZK proof systems they are right now evolving. So ever since the Grow sixteen, which is the first uh, widely deployed. ZK schemes in practice, like we have like Planck, Marlin, Stark, Nova, Supernova, Hyperplank. So like every year we have a bunch of ZK uh, processes coming out to have like better performance than their uh, uh, than their pre previous design. And uh, as a hardware uh, design company, like we need to somehow defend against this like evolving uh, uh, status. So they are like. Um, two uh, design principles like we want to ensure like when we want to like enforcing our design. The first one is like we only optimize the most uh, general components. And second, like we work on the lowest level components. So if we extract something like out of the, uh, all the they can put systems uh, above, it will be the multi-scanner multi multiplication for the KZG based one, the number theoretic transform for the KZG or phi based one, uh, the polynomial evaluation and also hash function. Uh, yeah, for this talk, we only uh, deal with the first two, the multi-scanner multiplication and NTT. Yeah. Before diving into the detail of the like, multi-scanner multiplication and NTT, we need to talk about the most fundamental module, the modular multiplication. So what is modular multiplication? It's basically asked to do this like uh, computation, like to calculate, uh, to cal calculate the equals like x, y mod r. So like if you write it in this Montgomery form, it will be something like this, the z prime, like Montgomery reduction of the x prime, y prime. While x prime, y prime, z prime as can be described like, uh, like, like uh, the multiplication of x times y or like uh, accordingly. Um, yeah, so like if we, uh, so that's the um, problem description, but if we like want to implement this uh, this like Montgomery reduction, uh, we actually only need like three integer multiplication. The first one is to calculate like X prime times Y prime to get uh, T1. And T2 is um, uh, RSB of, of this like uh, calculation. So it's RSB of T1 times a constant. And then T3 is uh, MSB of T1 plus T2 times constant. So it can only be, um, uh, be calculated using these like three uh, three multiplications, and so that's most uh, fundamental module in our all designs since it's used both in the NTT in the MSM part. And some 
key design choices in hardware is to say like for here we only care about like three multiplication, like one variable variable multiplication, then like variable constant multiplication, and then variable constant multiplication with MSB. So for here we use carrot super multiplication to reduce the hardware resource usage. Like we try uh, on the tomb cook also a little bit, but uh, ultimately we use carrot super. We think it's the best. Uh, performance it can achieve the best performance for this like um for for the current uh parameters and if we want to do it on the fpga so we use NART to reduce the dsp usage in this variable constant multipliers so that's just some our uh, our thoughts on how to design the modular multiplication on fpj okay now let's dive into the uh, the fun part, the multi-scanner multiplication. So multi-scanner multiplication is a generalization of this like scanner multiplication. So it's like uh, K here is an integer and it's in the scanner field. And P is a point on an elliptic curve. And we want to calculate this like K times P, which is like P plus P, like we have like uh, K uh, of P here. And as I said, like multi-scanner multiplication is a generalization of this. So we have uh, another parameter n here. So like we have uh, a1 to an and p1 to pn, and we want to calculate uh, this sum, like a1 times p1 plus uh, a2 times p2, etc. Till like an times pn. And the goal here, of course, is, is to minimize the number of like group operation, like uh, the addition here as a function of this parameter n. And if we do it naively, like we use this double and add like to, to compute like uh, this ai times pi, then we just sum them up. Then we appro approximately we did like 1.5 times the weight of the uh, of the point times the n. So that's, that, that's uh, roughly the number of operation that like, we need to do if we do it naively. And the current state of the art is a Pippinger algorithm or like the bucket method. So the high level st strategy is to say like we can actually uh, reduce um, uh, wider bit like MSN into a smaller ones. Like for, for here it's like from B bit MSN to several like C bit MSN. And then we just uh, calculate this like C bit MSN using the parallelism of it. And then we combine it to, to get the Final ones. So, like in that way, we can somehow reduce the overhead in the computation, and the number of operations in this way is approximately just uh, sixteen times n. So that's a huge improvement since, like, for here you don't care about the. Uh, so for here, the complexity doesn't depend on the width of the uh, width of the point. Yeah. Okay. So uh, let's say like the. I'll go with a high level description of like what's our MSM, MSM design. So for here, like as we can see from the picture, uh, we design a fully pipeline structure. So which means like the moment it reads something from the host of where PCIe, like we, we can just uh, calculate uh, the corresponding results. So there is like no, um, no storage need for, for the whole computation. And it contains like uh, several steps. The first one is to get the coordinates for the point and the scanner from the PCIe. So like we get the GN and and also the uh, AN from the from the host. And second, we check if this point, the input point, is already in the accumulated table or not. If it's in the accumulated table, we uh, if it's not in the accumulated table. Then we can just send the point and scanner to the ARU, which is responsible to do the uh, point add, the point double uh, to to compute, and then we write the result back in the accumulated table. And if it's in the accumulated table, like we can just send the in table point and the inputs of the scanner to the ARU to compute, and then we write back. So that's a high level idea of how the data flow uh, is like in the in our current design. Okay, so like if we take a closer look at uh, at the uh, at our design, it will be something like this. So like we have a bunch of PEs. 
The P stands for processing element. It's the basic structure for how we do the acceleration. So we have a bunch of P's and it will take this like Xn, the scalar and the points Gn as inputs and then send this input to each of the PE. Um, if we need enlarge like one PE, it will contain this like sub modules. So as I said in the previous night, we'll have the ALU, uh, it will have the, um, it will have the ARU, which is responsible for doing the point add and the addition. And the scalable PE chain generator is like uh, the part, uh, it's uh, the, the above of the picture. Like we can basically support like arbitrary PEs, but depending on the resource we have at uh, the different FP, FPJ chips, we mean like to specify how many PEs like we can put on the, on the FPJ. But, but in general, we can support arbitrary number of P's. And uh, yeah, so each P will contain this, this like one ARU and two accumulated table and then two controller, the table controller. The ARU will be a fully pipelined easy point double uh, add or double is, is responsible to do all this computation like for, for doing this like uh, scalar multiplication. And the easy, uh, Accumulated table will have like a run read and write writes uh, through like S run. So it will store this temporary um, uh, result. And the table controller will reduce the uh, result in table to, to have a better performance. So it's basically it can be treated as a hardware acceleration of the Pippinger algorithm. Uh, yeah, if we, so that's like a high level description of like uh, our design, but if we instantiate it on, on the, on the FPJ, it will be like four. So we put like two FPJ uh, on a PCB. So uh, PCB stands for printed circuit board. Uh, and for each PC, uh, for each piece FPJ, we have like two PEs, which is responsible to do the calculation. So key, the key idea here is to have like multiple FPJ per PCB and then have multiple PCB per FPJ. So in that way, like we can improve the performance of the FPJ. Uh, yeah, so here is the, um, here is our performance for these two curves, like the BN254 and BLS377. The BLS381 like, will be of similar performance uh, as BLS377. So I uh, just, we also did that, but I, I just ignored here in the table. So basically we can do um, uh, two to the 26 um, um, MSN in around for BN 254 in around 40 seconds. So that's uh, the size of the circuit like some layer two scaling solution I like, uh, care about. So to compare with the GPU, com uh, to compare with the GPU performance, well, we are 12 times faster than the Z-Price GPU winner on this RTX 3090 GPU cards. It's for the FBRF377 curve. And it's 23 times faster than the supranational performance that open source uh, GPU implementation on BN254, uh, also on the 3090 high uh, GPU cards. So that's compared with the GPU. And to compare with like uh, the FPGA, so, uh, we are 300 times faster than the uh, than Pipe MSN. Uh, yeah, so it's for this like BS 377 uh, curve and about 100 faster than Cyclone MSN also on for, for this curve. Yeah, so like there is like a secret ingredient I, I haven't talked about to have this like um, powerful performance. I'll talk about that later in the, uh, in the slides. So that's for the MSM part. Uh, all these numbers, like all the uh, performance numbers, like they are in microseconds. Okay. The second part is like the number theoretic transform. So that's another big chunk. So that uh, accounts for a big chunk of the uh, computational time. And number theoretic transform is a variant of this like uh, discrete Fourier transform, which is also a special case for the faster Fourier transform. But for here, the entity care about the finite field and about the polynomials. And basically, um, yeah, things like the for the entity is also not of the same 
of roughly the same size of, of the MSN. Maybe it's like like one or two um, more than the like maybe it's two to the twenty seven, two to the twenty eight. Uh, for the so that's the size of the NTT. So if you do that size of the NTT on hardware, then it will require a huge, huge bandwidth as analyzed in this type of decay paper. Like it will be like maybe in terabytes. Uh, uh, so that's the bandwidth required if you do it um, directly. So the idea is like we also follow the type of decay paper is to decompose this like n size um, NTT into a square root n size uh, NTT. So basically, like we can write it into a matrix, and we we can first uh, do this like a uh, square root NTT for each of the square root columns, and then we multiply the output with a corresponding total factor, and then we do it for 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 each of the rows, and at least we just output the elements in this like column major order as the final array. So in that sense, like we can basically uh, reduce. Uh, like maybe two to the twenty-eight NTT into the two to the uh, fourteen NTT, so that's a huge uh, relief on the bandwidth requirement. And if we want to map this like decom decomposing uh, techniques like into hardware, like we have like several, we encounter several problems. The first one, as you can see, like the NTT, like if you do the uh, do the calculation, it has this like butterfly on like uh, computation. So like first, and like you for for instance, if it's uh, two to the um, two to the ten NTT, like you first you need to access the first uh, spot and the five thirteen spot of the uh, of the uh, of the array. So if this like butterfly computation, it will result in this like very bad memory access pattern since like you cannot read enough on on, on your like on chip memory. Uh, yeah, so it may require the host the GPU to perform some also like to perform some pre or post or reordering to make sure the order is correct. So it will put some overhead on the CPU. So our solution is to say we can actually customize the intermediate da data layout with like this like reorder computation. So in that sense, like we can increase the data access. While at the same time, there's like no need to do the pre or post uh, reordering on the CPU. And the second one, as you can see, like if you want to deal with this large size of NTT, we also need to somehow deal with this like large size of a uh, Twitter factor. Uh, yeah, so like once we sometimes here is to say maybe we can store it on the host memory, and when we when we want to uh, when we want to uh, compute it, which can just retrieve it from the memory, but it will put a lot of overhead on the transition, uh, transmission. And if we want to do it on the fly, then yeah, so it will be another issue since like it will use some computation resource to do it on the fly. So, so the solution we have right now is to like somehow in between these like two attempts. So we will mix in the storing and the compute on the fly. Uh, yeah, so it will only require a very small memory footprint uh, for this Twitter factor. And in that sense, we only need to do a little bit extra computation to calculate the Twitter factor if like we want. Uh, yeah, so like our NTT is also like, we are still like working on the NTT is not finished yet, but our design is a multi-die FPGA based um, accelerator. Um, so like we will have some high bandwidth memory for massive um, uh, storage on this, uh, for, for massive on the band, broad uh, bandwidth. And we also need to optimize the air used to saturate this PCIe since we also need something like the fully pipeline design. And it's fully pipeline to overlap the data transmission and the computation. So here is a, a high level picture of what the NTT will be like. It will retrieve something from the memory. So it will, the memory of something from the CPU, the CPU will have this like PCIe uh, uh, connection with the accelerator interface. And the interface will be connected with a uh, HBM. So the like multiple chips on the on the PCB will share this like HBM and it will have this vectorized butterfly unit to do the actual computation. So it's a high level uh, picture of like our design for the NTT. Uh, as I said, like our NTT is not finished yet, but the estimated performance is to say like we can basically 
compute 2 to the 26, the 256 bits NTT in around 27 milliseconds. So also like we want to compare with GPU and also the FPJ. Uh, the, for the GPU right now, the, the Spark, which is also by Supernational, is the best performance is achieved 58 times faster than the GPU based implementation. So compare with like uh, Spark, our Solar NTT will be around uh, 16 times faster than it if you run it on our uh, 1398 GPU cards. And it will be about 13 times faster than the 1498 GPU cards. So it will be open for testing and integration by end of April. Yeah. So that's our NTT part. Um, okay. So now here is the secret in ingredients, the secret sauce, like how we can achieve uh, this performance on FPGA. Yeah, so like we basically customized our FPGA server. So so this is a picture of like the high level um, description of the uh, of our FPGA server. So it will have multiple CPUs um, and the CPUs will be connected with this like high density acceleration card. So we have basically have a bunch of PCBs um, on, which is connected to the CPU by the PCIe, the high bandwidth interconnected bus. Um, so like if we enlarge like one uh, PCB, uh, it will be, we have a bunch of like algorithm, algorithm which is the ARU core. And this ARU core, this basically will share this like uh, central storage as, as I said before for the, um, um, for instance, the HBM for the entity side. And it will also be interconnected with each other uh, using this like interconnect uh, controller. Uh, yeah, so that's, a high level picture of like what our customized FPJ server will be like. Um, so like to achieve this performance, we customized the, like the high bandwidth interconnect for all the FPJ chips on, in our machine. And also we customized the, the PCB uh, design. Uh, and of course, also the power delivery and auto cooling since like you plug in so many PCBs in one machine, the the power delivery and the water cooling will be a huge problem. So that's a blurred version of our PCB uh, picture. And this is basically how the server will be like. Yeah, so the server is already online and we will open like for the MS, like we have already demonstrated uh, the demo to the score team and we'll, we will invite more team to, to, uh, to, to do a demo on our machine. Yeah, so like our, so like uh, FPJ is just an intermediate step for us. So our ultimate goal is to build the ASIC. Uh, so we call it Galaxy ZKP. So it will be a 12 nanometer uh, ZKP ASIC. It will be ready by around maybe second quarter 2024. And so the, uh, um, so the, like as I said before, the modular multiplication will be the most fundamental components in the PE and we will group a lot of PEs as a PE cluster. So here is a floor plan of how the, um, how the MSM part will be like. So um, like we have a bunch of PEs and each PE will have a bunch of like modular multiplication uh, components in them. If, we, if you like enlarge one component, it will be something like this. So that's a floor plan of how the ASIC will be like. Okay. So that's it. Yeah, so and, and a question on the technical summary. And if not, we are going to move on to the fun part of the nice demo. Uh, I guess I can ask you a question. Um, okay. If, if you go back to the like MSM architecture part where you were showing like two FPGAs, um, this one. Okay, so there are like two FPGAs here. I'm wondering like with 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 these like PE modules, if you just try it just with one FPGA, how do how would the performance compare to like the state of the art ones that you were talking about? Like I'm wondering how how much additional power the two FPGA setup gives. Because I, I think the like Zebra or the the benchmarks there were not using multiple FPGAs, right? Right. Yeah. So yeah. So yeah, you are absolutely right. 
So the FPGA performance we compare with is just for one FPGA chip. So like we have basically like multiple FPGA chips in our FPGA server. So like um, so like if we if we like uh, use just the one FPGA server, our performance will be slightly better than the uh, the champion for the FPGA for the ZPrice FPGA uh, track. Yeah, so it's about one point six times better. Yeah, so that's that's a performance. So that's like a, a apple to apple comparison. Got yeah, it. but to compete with a GPU, like actually you need this like massive interconnected FPGA to compete with GPU. Yeah. And and how many like the the F the FTT uh, that one also will have um it, it'll be the same FPGA server setup with with two yeah. Yeah, it will be us. The NTT will be like we. So the ST, estimated performance, we would do it also on the same FPGA server. It's, it's also a massive ne, interconnected FPGA. Got it. And and like the like the the core, like I guess what was the core like if you had to summarize the core reason that you wanted to like build your own FPGA server rather than utilize like existing infrastructure on, I don't know, some cloud provider, like what's the core? Okay. Is, is it this bandwidth? Um, is, is the bandwidth? Yeah. So the takeaway here is like a single FPGA chip just cannot compete with a single GPU card. So like the clock frequency of GPU is usually 2.5 gigahertz. And for FPGAs, like two, to uh, 250 to maybe 300 megahertz. So that's, a, that's just a one huge, one big difference. And also the process like you use to manufacture this GPU is you know, maybe two or three generation ahead of the FPGA. So like you, you cannot just uh, compete with GPU on a single FPGA chip. Yeah. So in that yeah. case, then one might ask like, why, why would, why not just use okay. you? Yeah, so like the FPGA, like the current, like our FPGA prototype is to, since like our ultimate goal is to do the ASIC. And to do the ASIC, you need to work with FPGA. So either for verification or like for some performance estimation. And also for the for the ASIC, we also need to design this, like maybe it's similar PCB to have this like high bandwidth um, uh, transmission. So like, so that's why like we are doing it right now for the FPJ, the massive the interconnected FPJ. Uh yeah, actually uh let me uh add a few points to, to Leo's uh, answer. So uh mm -hmm. so first of all, uh GPU's performance is still far from satisfactory. Um so uh even with top tier GPU performance, you cannot reach uh the, the, the proof generation time required by a lot of project runners. Um, that's one thing, uh, which means uh, we predict that uh, for, for this year, uh, 2023, we are going to see a competition between massively connected FPJ system, which is what we are doing right now. Uh, and also another check is massively connected GPU system, which is NVIDIA and some other vendors we are going to do. Uh, so, um, which we, we, we think that only with this level of performance provided by massively connected FPGA system or, or GPU system that uh, uh, the, the, the proof generation, uh, the required proof generation time can be achieved. So that's one thing. Another thing is that um, Leo just mentioned that uh, this solar MSM system is a prototype to, to, uh, to pave the way for our ASIC design. So as you, so as you might have seen on the slides that uh, our solar MSM system has a, a more than one terabyte per second aggregated bandwidth. Um, that's a thing we will need to achieve with our ASIC design. So, which means we have to physically manufacture such a machine that has this kind of bandwidth so that we can know what kind of technology challenge might lies ahead and we can solve them in our ASIC design. For example, uh, during the solar MSM manufacturing process, 
we see problems from thermal solution, we see problems from mechanical uh, solution uh, because that machine is really heavy. Uh, and also the PCB board is large, you're going to have mechanical problems. And also we, we see power integrity issue because the, the power delivery is to a gigantic machine. The, the power delivery network is going, to, it's going, it's going to be stressed a lot. And also another thing is a um, signal integrity issue. You are going to see one terabyte per second bandwidth um, on, 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 on those PCB board, which means uh, the, 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 the kind of uh, signal uh, integrity issue will go into service if you are going to deal with this kind of bandwidth. Um, so one really big thing behind this solar uh, MSM system is that we, we, we need to do a trial run before we invest, for example, $10 million into uh, making a, a ASIC chip. Yeah. Uh, is it okay to, 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 to have another question or? After the demo. So okay, thanks. Thanks for an interesting presentation. I, I, is there any 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 chance that you can uh, shed a light on uh, power consumption of the system and maybe associated clock frequency? So, uh, so the so the power consumption is on the same level as GPU uh, per per PCB car. Um, yeah. So the entire system it's actually on the same level of performance per watt with GPU. Yeah, so like the performance per watt is of the same level as, as GPU, which means like each piece of view is about 400 watts. Yeah, for 400 or two, like for 450. So that's a power consumption. Any yeah, chance for, for, for comments on the, on, the, on the clock frequency of the... Uh, the clock frequency, like we have several versions, so it depends on like, uh, so the clock, fre clock frequency is right, right now around 280 uh, mega, yeah, megahertz. Okay, thanks. Okay, so if no question, we'll move on to the fun part. Okay. Uh, so let me share my screen then. Um, yeah. Okay. Uh, can you guys see my screen now? Yep. Yeah. Okay. So right now I'm on my uh MacBook. Uh, so I'm going to uh connect to our uh solar MSM machine, which is located in another continent, which means the the network will be pretty slow. Uh, so you guys must be uh, better that with mine. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so here is our uh, solar MSM machine. Um, it's to socket AMD CPU, AMD third generation uh, 75F3. Uh, and also we equipped that with um, <clears throat> two terabytes of memory to run really large uh, circuit size. Um, and then let's go to the uh, the, the uh, demo engineer, oh, sorry. Okay, here we go. Okay, so we are going to run uh, the, 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 the benchmark demo from two to the power of 16, all the way to two to the power of 26. And we just claim that our performance is uh, 40 milliseconds for uh, circuit size two to the power of uh, 26. And you are going to witness that in a moment. So let's do that now. Okay, that's two to the power of 16, two to the power of 17, 18, and uh, 19 and 20. And another thing you guys you guys must be uh must be aware of that is that uh since this is a uh this is a massively connected FPGA system, uh then it's not going to be very friendly to use this machine to run a small circuit size because you need to coordinate between so many FPGA chips and PCBs between your CPU and and your FPGA accelerated array acceleration card array, um so 
the really end of energy will only begin to manifest with really large uh circuit size. For example, two to the power twenty um twenty four or twenty five twenty six, and with even larger circuit size, the end of energy will be even larger. Yeah, and uh the the all the uh, base and scalar uh, input data are generated randomly. And uh, I will let you guys to uh, to um, to have a, a short dive into the uh, into the source code uh, because the generation of base and scalar uh, for two to the power of 26 will going to take like five minutes, uh, which means we are going to have some time to uh, to 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 uh, take a look at the source code. Uh, okay, uh, let me switch to another terminal window. Uh, can you guys see my screen still? Yeah, it's still it's still the terminal. Um, the yeah. Original. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, actually, uh, maybe let me uh, uh share my entire uh desktop. Then uh, that would be more convenient. Okay. Uh, can you guys see my screen now? Yep. Okay. So this terminal window is still generating input data, uh, which will be a little bit slow because the input data is generated randomly on CPU. And let's take a look at the, at the source code. Um, okay. Wait, just to clarify. So like most of the time that's being taken up by these MSMs at this point is the generation of the random points, right? Uh, right, because the, the, the generation, the, the, the uh, points generation is just for the demo purpose. It's rather slow. But the, as you can see, the, the computation, which is solar MSM part, it's really, uh, it's actually really tiny. Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah. Um, so let's take a look at the source code. Oh, sorry. Okay. Uh, let's take a look at the test.rs. Uh, so this is where you guys can see uh, how the tests are running. Uh, so we are going. Uh, so so we are running the test uh, size from six, two to the power of sixteen, all the way to two to the power of twenty seven actually. But twenty seven is going to take uh, much longer, um, because the the, the the point generation procedure. Uh, so we are going to generate uh, bases uh, randomly. As you can see, uh, this is uh, random generation from, from, from a random number generator. And also scalar are also generated randomly. Uh, and then we will do uh, the MSM part on CPU as a comparison uh, because we need to collect the result from CPU uh, as a as a as a performance comparison, also for the correctness comparison, um, and then we will do uh, the MSM calculation on our uh, FPGA accelerator array, and then we will do a sanity check. We will do this assertion to check whether the result returned by our FPGA card and the CPU or equal or not. If it's not equal, then we are going to see a a an an arrow that we are going to crash the entire demo. Uh, but definitely we're not going to see that. Uh, okay. So two to the power of 24, that's 12 milliseconds. And now two to the power of 25, that's 21 milliseconds, exactly as what we claim uh, during the presentation. And this is two to the power of 26. Uh, the generation, uh, the base and scalar generation will going to take uh, two multiplied by 130 seconds, which means that will be around five minutes. Yeah. Uh, so let's go back to the to the source code. Okay. As you guys can see, this is how the tests are running, and let's take a look at the uh, at the solar MSM main function, which is uh, yeah located here. This is solar MSM function. Uh, so it takes base and a scalar and do some uh, preparation. And it will be calling uh, 
calling a, a, a main function, which is here, which is called the Mars MSM calculate. This is the, 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 the core part, uh, including PCIe transfer and the computation. Uh, so this is the, the, the actual, uh, the, actually the most time consuming part for, for a large circuit size MSM calculation. And also we are going to take a look at this function as well. This function is located in another uh, source file code as well. See. Oops. Oh. Okay. So MSM dot C. Okay. So this function is the, the function we just called a Mars MSM calculate. So solar MSM system is comprised by a lot of Mars MSM PCB board. So each one of the PCB board, we call it Mars MSM. So the entire calculation will be distributed to, to multiple Mars MSM PCB board. Uh, and each board has multiple FPGA chips uh, on that and interconnected by a graded more than one terabytes per second interconnect bandwidth. Um, so as you can see, we created a multiple uh, thread and we distributed all the calculation to multiple cars. And that's what we do during the, during the computation. Um, and uh, the, the, the PCIe transfer is included in, in this uh, solar MSM thread. Okay. Uh, uh, let's go back to, oh, it's still generating. Yeah, so as you can see, each time we run uh, the, 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 the benchmark, uh, it passed the, the sanity check, which means the FPJ result and CPU result were matched. And for each one of the run, all matched. Yeah, and we still have time to take a look at more source code. Uh, so this is the, uh, okay, head mark. And also, <clears throat> uh, let's take a look. Um, okay, so let me send. Uh, C. Oh, the network is rather slow. <clears throat> okay. Okay, this is the the uh the thread entry function solar MSM thread. Uh, so as you can see, we're doing a DMA transfer here, uh, which means the PCIe transfer time, which as we just mentioned, is included in the timing. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay, so this is two to the power of 26. Uh, so base generation is taking uh, nearly three minutes and the generating scalar is six seconds. And if we do the MSM on the CPU, it's going to take nine seconds. Uh, but if you do that uh, on our massively connected FPGA array, it's going to take only 41 milliseconds. Uh, matched with what we claim during the, during the presentation. Yeah, so I think that's the end for our uh, live demo. Uh, so uh, we're going to take more questions uh, regarding this demo. Uh, yeah, so by, by, by the way, the CPU here is like 128 cores. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. actually we can do this uh, through a LCPU. As you can see, this is, uh, uh, for one socket, uh, as you can see, it's uh, it's thirty two core, but uh, sixty four threads, and we have two uh this type of CPU installed on uh on the system. As you can see, two new mono. Yeah, uh, two sockets and CPU cores per socket. Uh, yeah, two one. Uh, 
right yeah okay so um yeah we, we can take more questions regarding regarding the demo so actually we have demo that is performance to scroll uh about uh two to three weeks before um and um uh and we are going to uh do more lab demo to the entire community and also uh uh more uh projects during the during the coming week uh and this solar msm system is still evolving um the the performance you guys are witnessed today uh two to the power 26 it's 41 millisecond but in the coming week we are going to uh improve that with a um with a new PCIe driver, uh, and then the performance will be improved to about 30 millisecond, which means we're going to improve about 30% in the coming week. Uh, and two months later, you guys are going to witness the second generation solar MSM system, and the performance will be doubled, which means the performance will be under 20 seconds, two months from now. And by that time, we are going to also doing live demo uh, for, for the entire community. Uh, and uh, also at a time, we're not be just limiting to MSM uh, acceleration. We are going to do live demo on NTT and also polynomial relation part as well. And hopefully at a time, we can do a, a, a complete end-to-end -end, uh, acceleration for, for um, a whole bunch of um, systems. Yeah, and in addition to the next demo, like we are also going to open the SSH, uh, yeah, to our customers to to take a closer look. Yeah. Awesome! Thanks for the presentation. It's a cool demo. Um, yeah. Anybody in the audience have questions? So it, it looks to me like MSM and FTT are, are not bottlenecks anymore almost. Like, I guess if it, with the right hardware. Um, uh, right, yeah. So our plan is that we will be providing uh, this level of performance with our ASIC chip uh, next year. So you're going to see exactly the same performance on our ASIC chip. Uh, so basically we are, uh, like compressing the performance of this entire machine uh, onto a single ASIC chip. Hmm. Yeah. And that's going to take a lot of challenges because yeah, our ASIC must be supporting one terabyte per second bandwidth on chip. Uh, yeah, and that's, that's really, really uh, challenging because only like NVIDIA, Apple or, or AMD can, those, those gigantic company only those gigantic company can, can do this kind of bandwidth before, but we must face this challenge if we want to provide this kind of performance with a single chip. Yeah. Cool. Um, any... Any any other questions? Last last chance for questions. All right. Um. Yeah, Leo and Bowen, thank thanks so much for for this presentation. Very exciting work. Um. And yeah, hopefully this can be a boost to the whole zero knowledge community. So, uh, yeah, thanks for the presentation. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Thanks uh, for for the invitation. Yeah. Yep. All right. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Bye. Bye guys. Yeah. Bye. 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 Bye.